Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And I haven't filmed a video in about two and a half weeks, so this feels slightly weird, but I've just got back from holiday and of course I have got lots of planty things to be getting on with. So that is the plan today. I've also got some super exciting growth updates that I want to show you and some not so exciting things that have gone a little bit wrong as well. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So it's something really, really exciting that's happened in the time that I've been away. My Hoya Latifolia Sarawak has suddenly kicked into action and started doing amazing, amazing things. She's obviously blooming here. Not all of the little flowers have popped yet, but she's putting out a beautiful bloom. And she's also giving me a new leaf. And oh my goodness, this makes me so excited because this Hoya is kind of, is my pride and joy plant. I absolutely adore it, but it is the slowest plant in the world to grow. I've had it for, I think about a year and a half now, and it came with these three leaves, and it's only given me one leaf in the time that I've owned it. So every little bit of growth with this plant is honestly the most rewarding thing. So that's making me super excited. It's also put out this really long tendril, and as you can see, there are some other leaves on there as well. So I really hope this is the start of the plant starting to give me some lovely, beautiful growth and fill out a little bit because she's been just quite upright and, I don't know, very, let's just say very statementy for a very long time, but hasn't really given me much else in the growth department. Um, but obviously she's blooming down there and I don't know if I've ever seen a Hoya put out so many peduncles at one time. I don't know if you can see the top there, but all of those are peduncles so she's gonna have i mean how many are there there's one two three four five six seven seven there and there's another little one just there so she's gonna be blooming like crazy and although i love her blooms and i think she is such a beautiful plant when she does flower i'm kind of in two minds about whether or not to keep all of the peduncles i might chop them back i'd be really interested to know your thoughts on this actually if you've got any any input then please do comment it down below but I just really want to encourage the plant to kind of push lots of energy into foliage and not so much the flowers. So that's kind of my thoughts at the moment, but I'm not going to do any chopping on that today. So yeah, do let me know. But something slightly annoying that I have noticed as well is she does have a few mealy bugs around the top by the presuncles up here. I'll probably have to put some clips in because it's not that easy to see on camera, but that is the first thing that I'm going to be tackling. It's it's not awful, there's only a few, but I know that if you don't tackle them quickly, they spread so quickly. And especially with Hoyas, and especially Hoyas that are putting out new growth, new growth can be affected by mini bugs really, really badly. So yeah, that is what we're going to start with. <laughs> So as I say, I can only see a couple of mealybugs at the moment, but in my experience, when there are just even a couple, there's often more, or there's just like little baby ones that you can often miss. Um, and the way that I treat mealybugs is just with isopropyl alcohol. I'll link the stuff I get down below. I just get it on Amazon, fill up a little pot of it and use a little paintbrush and you just literally paint the mealybugs and it kills them instantly. I don't particularly like doing it, but mealybugs as I say they spread so fast and they can bring down your plant very very quickly so yeah it's it's the most effective thing that I found that isn't too chemically because I, I'm really trying not to use chemicals I did have to use chemicals on my Monstera dubia before I went away because again mealybugs and I wasn't going to be around to monitor it but on the whole I don't like doing the chemical thing with my plants just because I like trying to keep things as natural as possible often towards the top of the leaf where the petiole meets the leaf as well, just there, that's where they tend to gather. And as I say, they do tend to affect the newer growth. I think just because it's softer, um, they do tend to affect the newer growth quite a lot. So I'm gonna have to just really closely monitor this plant, especially like the little diddy leaves that it's got coming out on this tendril. Ones like that often can be taken down by mealy bugs very quickly. So yeah, I'm just gonna have to Keep this plant as isolated as I possibly can. Potentially give it a shower down with some horticultural soap if things don't get better. But I'm really hoping that that's just a one-off. 
I am, however, going to keep this out just because I have struggled with mealybugs a bit over the last few months and I'm not convinced that I won't find more as I go around. So I think that will stay there for the time being. And then, yeah, I need to figure out what to do with this really long tendril. What I did before when it started tendrilling is I attached another, another just kind of like bamboo cane stake to the top of this plant and I wound it round in an anti-clockwise direction to try and get some growth going. And it wasn't really working. Again, Yoli's tail whacked some of the leaves off. So I did eventually decide to just kind of take sections of the tendril and put them in my prop box. They are rooting really nicely in there. So I'm hoping at some point I might be able to pot them all up together and get a lovely full plant going. But yeah, that's, that's just an update on this one and one that's making me really happy and really, really excited. And then another pretty exciting update is on my Philodendron Splendid that also gave me a new leaf in the time that I'm away. This is its new leaf and look at how beautiful that is. It hasn't completely finished hardening off yet so it's got that beautiful kind of readiness to the back of its leaf which I absolutely love. And this is kind of this, as you can see, the moss pole is just wrapped in cling film. This is what I tend to do when I'm not going to be around to monitor and hydrate my moss poles over a long period of time. I was away for eight days and because I did do a chop and extend on this plant fairly recently, literally all of its root system is currently in the moss pole. There's barely anything in the soil. So that's literally what's keeping it going. So I'm just going to take the cling film off and hope this plant was actually next to my Hoya Sarawak. So hope that there are no mealy buggy issues here. Give it a bit of a check over. It's amazing though how hydrated this method does keep the pole. Like I know I had Emma, my friend Emma, who's good growing on YouTube, and my friend Lottie as well, come in and just kind of do some plant maintenance when I was away, which was very, very nice of them. But Emma did say she was like, this moss pole was hydrated and she came in and she didn't come in for, I think, about six days. So it is a very good method. In theory, if you didn't mind the look of it, you could just keep your moss pole wrapped in cling film all the time. It would actually be quite a good way of doing things. I'm just going to keep this to one side and I'll use it the next time I need to keep a moth pole hydrated. Oh, that's annoying. The new leaf, I've got slanted ceilings. The new leaf has just hit the slanted ceiling and it's broken. I don't think it's going to mean that I have to chop the whole of the top bit of that leaf, but that's very annoying. It's just so big now. Um, but I can't see anything that really needs addressing with this plant. I can't see any signs of mealy bugs. Again, I will be keeping a very careful eye on this one. Just because it's a foliage plant like this does not mean that they can't get mealy bugs. I had mealy bugs on my bird of paradise a little while ago, which I've never had before. So I just, yeah, will be keeping everything under very close supervision. But I'm super proud of this plant and super, super, super happy with how it's doing. I'm just actually going to encourage some of the aerial roots that have grown out of the pole back into the moss just because obviously they won't be able to absorb any moisture otherwise they are so fragile trying to be very very delicate and gentle doing this this plant would actually probably long term do better on a thicker d-shaped moss pole just because it's so well rooted in here at the moment it's got such a big root system of aerial roots Oh, it's going to be a tricky thing to make that transfer, but I think at some point soon I might have to do it. And a plant that I was struggling with quite a bit up until recently was my Anthurium Magnificum. And oh my goodness, look at the size of the leaf she's just given me. This one was starting to push out before I went away and I was so excited to watch it size up. And I've come home to this and it's just making me unbelievably happy because all of the other foliage I've just had, as I say, just ongoing issues with and I haven't been able to put it down to pests. I couldn't quite work out what was going on, but I did change this one over to semi-hydro. I know I'm banging on about pond and semi-hydro so much in my videos at the moment, but honestly, it is for a good reason because that's when she gave me this beautiful leaf and there's no sign of browning. There's no discoloration. There's obviously this little tear here and that is actually down to me. I tried to help the leaf unfurl when it was very, very small. And I know I'm always saying don't do that. And this is the reason why, because as the leaf sizes up, you will be able to see the damage and you do risk damaging the leaf. It is obviously just an aesthetic thing, but I'm a little bit annoyed about it and it should really teach me not to fiddle with leaves in the future. I will try, I will try. But yeah, I just wanted to give you an update on her because I'm so unbelievably proud of how well she's doing. 
And the other thing that's literally burst into life in the time that I've been away is the growth on my euphorbias. And I absolutely love it when these ones start giving you new growth because firstly, they are so unbelievably quick. But just look, it's so adorable. And all the little spikes are currently, they haven't like hardened off. They're so gentle and kind of squidgy. And so, yeah, that's my big euphorbia acrorensis. And then my variegated euphorbia is doing the exact same thing. How pretty is that? And the little branchy bit she's got at the bottom there as well. Oh, I just love it when these plants grow. It makes me so happy. And one more positive update before I get on to some not so good ones is that my little bear paw cactus is flowering. And I haven't had this plant that long in the grand scheme of things. I've had it since it was quite small, but I think it's only been maybe like five or six months since I've had this plant. And like, because I haven't owned the plant previously, I wasn't sure if they had to kind of be really big and mature to be able to flower. And I saw these starting to come out again before I went away on holiday. And I thought that I'd miss them. I thought maybe by the time I got back, the flowers would have died off. And they just keep coming. Like there's more and more. There's one ready to burst just there. There's another one just here. And it's absolutely adorable. And this plant has actually really sized up in the time that I've been away as well. I think because it is naturally quite a slow grower when I'm seeing it every single day, I don't always notice growth in this plant that much, but stepping away for a bit and then coming back to it, it's really nice to see how well it's doing. And yeah, I, again, I'm not sure what I should do in regards to the flowers. If it does keep blooming for me, should I chop them back to encourage more growth? It is really, really gorgeous though, and I kind of don't want to. So again, let me know what you would do. But yeah, I'm so proud of this plant. And getting into the nitty gritty, I've got things like this, this propagation rail that is just not doing well at all, as you can see. There's lots of dying plants in here and one of my little Maranta lemon limes there has completely died and I'm so sad about it. And obviously they have all still got water in there, but I think this is probably just down to the heat in the time that I've been away. Honestly, it has been so warm and I've said it before, but my flat just hoards heat. I stepped off the plane from Spain, the plane from Spain. When I got off the plane from Spain, it was hotter in the UK than it had been when I was away. So I can only imagine how warm things got in here. So yeah, that's definitely on my list and it needs to be addressed. But there's a couple of things in my cabinet that I want to deal with first. One of them is, um, these are actually Ross's plants. As you can see, they're very pink and colorful, but these have all been propagating in water. And although they look really good and they're growing beautifully, as you can see, the water's gone very, very sludgy. I suspect there might be a little bit of rotting in there. And I just feel like if I leave these for any longer, they might not be savable. So that is the first thing that I want to do. And then the other thing in my cabinet, my, oh, everything's growing like crazy in here. Um, my Alocasia sinuata, again, is looking really healthy. I adore this plant and I'm so happy with how it's doing. But I did take it out just to have a look and see how it was doing last night. And it looks black at the bottom. And I know that when Alocasia starts to rot, it can go downhill so fast. And I just want to make sure it hasn't spread to the corm. And so, yeah, that is very high on my list of things to do. So I'm going to set up a little potting station and we can get on with it. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is so heavy. Oh, stay upright. So starting with Ross's plants, I'm just gonna get them out one by one and just have a look. Oh God, there's so many, so many roots in here. I feel like, ha, ah, they formed a ball. So separating them is gonna be a little bit tricky. I'm gonna have to do it very gently. I'm going to try and just get the Tradus Gantra out first if I possibly can. Okay, so this is the little Tradus Gantra Nanook, Nanook, I never know how you say it, cutting. Um, and the roots look okay, it has got a little bit of like a rotten leaf or something on it. Um, but it hasn't got a huge root system, but I think it should be ready to be potted because I'm going to do these in semi-hydro. I think it should be ready to go into semi-hydro. In my experience of doing like propagation in semi-hydro um, and transferring cuttings to semi-hydro, I found that you can transfer them a little bit sooner than you might do if you were transferring like a plant to a substrate such as soil, just because I think because it is 
semi-hydro, semi-hydroponics, it does mean that the root system can just continue to develop and it isn't thrown into shock in the same way if you put it in something completely different, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? I feel like I know what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to keep them in little plastic cups. That's how I'm doing lots of my semi-hydro growing at the moment. And to be honest, like, I know some people said don't use plastic, but I so far have had no bad experience doing it that way. And I've got so many plastic cups and containers that I hang on to. So yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that this should, should do the trick. I'm just going to fill it to about there and then pop the little cutting in. It otherwise looks really healthy. It hasn't grown that much in the time that we've had it. This was um, this was a Scotland plant swap plant. And I, I, I mean, I'm not a massive Tradescantia person on the whole anyway. I've only got a couple in my collection. But the ones that I've got are really quite fast growing. I've got the Albo Vitata and the Variegated Flamensis. And both of those grow so quick. And I don't know if it's because this one's, I don't know. Like any of you that are more experienced with the Nanook, do let me know your growing experience. Does it just take a little while for it to get going? But yeah, I'll just fill a little reservoir of water like that in a minute and then hopefully that plant should continue to grow beautifully. And actually looking at the roots, so this is, oh, knocked off a leaf. Um, there's two plants here. This is a Begonia Maori Haze and this is a, I'd never actually heard of this plant before, but it's an Eristine Herbstii, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and both of their roots are very, very, very intertwined. And I think what's causing the rottiness that I can see in the water is the Begonia has dropped some leaves and that's what you can see the black bits there. So. I'm just going to take the rotty bits off and do my best to separate them. There's actually two Begonia Maori hazes in here and um, a lovely woman called Lydia gave me and Ross them at the plant swap and she gave one to me and one to Ross uh, and I was thinking about putting them up as separate plants but I'm thinking I might pot them together and part of the reason being that Ross is actually moving in quite soon. He's gonna he's gonna move in here and we're gonna live together in the one bedroom flats with a big dog and 300 plants. It's gonna be very interesting. Um, but I feel like, oh yeah, that's actually doing very well. Look at that. I feel like it can be one plant that we both appreciate. It's probably more his kind of plant than mine in general, if anything, but I just think it's beautiful. Like it's not overly colorful. It's more kind of like, a slight tinge of purple with lots of silver and I do think it's stunning. It's so fragile. <laughs> okay, I've got them apart and it looks okay but there are sections of root that look a little bit sludgy on this one. So I think I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to do a little bit of root pruning because I don't want it to start rotting and then bring down the whole plant. So yeah, I'm going to give them a little trim back and then I'm thinking I might also just give them a bit of a wash off so that if there's any kind of rotty residue or anything like that, then it can be gotten rid of before putting it into some hydro. Yeah, that's looking much better. Although the root system isn't as big, I think that stands a much better chance now. I think I might actually do that with all of the sections. Just give them a bit of a clean up. And yeah, this one's looking very sludgy. Although it is still looking very perky. It's lost a couple of leaves when I was taking it out of water, but it's looking pretty good. I don't know how much of this is actually root rot and how much of this is just it hanging on to what was in the water before. This is weird actually, looking at the roots when they're in the water, I'll see if I can bring this a little bit closer and try and show you. They look really healthy when they're in the water and then they just look a little bit dark when you take them out. So I think, considering the plant looks healthy, I think I'm going to risk it and just go ahead and pot it up as is without taking too much off it. 
obviously like with all of these I will be monitoring them super closely and if anything does go a bit wrong in the next few days few weeks then I can rethink um, and this plant it's kind of like I've said it before but it's kind of like the autumn anthera party time it seems to root like that in water I actually thought it was a type of autumn anthera when I first saw the plants um but yeah I popped it in water and literally within a couple of days it had roots which is just crazy so yeah let's let's pop them up I um, was saying over on my Patreon yesterday, I am like me and Ross are getting very creative with like space saving ideas and things that we're going to do to try and optimize room in the flats because when he moves in, he's he's also starting a new job that means that he's going to be working from home as well. So we're like obviously, although my flat is a, like an amazing size for me and Yoli, it is quite a small space when you think about two people working from home full time especially doing what I do and kind of creating chaos everywhere I go so we've got some really exciting ideas and I will I'm going to be doing kind of like behind the scenes stuff over on Patreon but when it's done I'll definitely be sharing it over here because uh, yeah I don't want to say too much because it's very early days at the moment it's just kind of a thought um, but it could be really, really cool what we're thinking of. So yeah, as I say, I'm super excited to document that and kind of take you through that. It will also involve creating some brand new like plant spaces as well. I'm gonna actually be able to have a little bit more space to do planty stuff uh, if it works. But yeah, I will, oh no, I just broke off a leaf. I will keep you updated. Uh, okay. Um, that was actually the original leaf that this plant came with, so that's a shame. Um, also, what am I doing? <laughs> I feel like I'm not quite back in my flow of things. I've just started doing something to that plant, and I haven't finished potting up this one. I haven't even started potting up this one. Um, I think I'm going to do this one. I've got an old little uh, spice jar of chilies here, and I've just taken the label off it, and I tend to use that a lot for like little ones. Um, these are really practical containers and I honestly never throw them away. So yeah, they, they make great little jars for growing. In fact, I'm going to put a little bit less in so I can try and get a few more nodes towards the bottom into semi-hydro. There we go. I think that looks about right. looking a little bit wonky at the moment but I think once it gets going and once it hydrates it should hopefully straighten itself out. I think I'm going to keep all of these three that I've just done in my cabinet still for the time being while they adjust. I don't want to change out their environment too much while they're also obviously going through a lot of other changes. I've just given their roots quite a significant prune back and hopefully that will mean that they'll adjust quite quickly and then I can think about bringing them out of the cabinet if I want to. Um, but the one that I'm clearly eager to get onto, my Alocasia sinuata, as you can see, I've already shown you, but the bottom looks really black and it is giving me lots of, lots of kind of new growth coming up there. So I think the plant's definitely going to be saveable, but I, oh, that is rotten. That just fell away. All the roots you can see in there just literally fell away. <sighs> okay. Okay. We need to just firstly see how far this is spread and how much roots I'm gonna to need to take off with alocasia. As I say, the roots rotting is one thing and usually the plant is savable if the roots are rotting, but if the bulb starts to rot and goes squidgy, then there's really nothing you can do to save it. I've tried so many things so many times when that starts to happen and it's pretty impossible. So. As I say, luckily this one does feel very firm and full. It's just the roots that are in a bit of a state. And again, obviously this is in semi-hydro. This typically doesn't happen as often with plants in semi-hydro. It tends to be much more an organic substrate thing. But like I said about the props through on my propagation rail in my bedroom, I think it's probably just because it has been so hot. This room, I mean, currently it's sweltering in here, but this room gets to kind of like 30, 32 degrees. And there's been times when my cabinets have got up to like 40 degrees Celsius. 
and obviously I haven't been around to like open doors, open windows, open my cabinet doors. And this one lives right at the top of my cabinet. So I think it's probably just been sitting in very warm water and obviously warmer water encourages bacteria to grow and does not help with things like rot. Um, but yeah, the good thing is the bad roots have pulled away very easily and it has still got some healthy root on that. So I think just transferring this to a different container and changing out its substrate and probably just actually giving these roots a wash should be fine. Because yeah, as you can see, it has still got some very healthy ones there. And it had a, I assume a little corm at the bottom and that has started to rot. Like that is, ooh, I just squished it. It's so squishy. So I've just removed that. But everything else looks good, which is good because I love this plant. Um, but again, I'm just going to give it a little rinse off and then get it into a new container with some fresh semi-hydro. <laughs> I think I'm going to put it in this little coffee cup. I know it doesn't have much of a root system now to fill that at the moment, but considering how quickly its roots spread when I put it into the last cup, I think this should do the trick. And again, like I said, with soil, obviously with soil, you have to be quite careful about pot sizing up too quickly. But with semi-hydro, so long as you're monitoring it, because you are just creating a reservoir, it doesn't tend to overwhelm the roots in the same way. Uh, so yeah, feels like the right decision. Let's fill the reservoirs. I just walked past my big alocasia portadora and got majorly distracted and started checking that plant. And it's got spider mites again. Honestly, that plant is like, I've never known a plant that is such a magnet for spider mites. Um, and it is next to, next to quite a lot of my other plants that are also, oh, three. Um, that are also slightly susceptible to spider mites. So I'm going to have to give all of those a check over, but I think I'm probably going to have to get my alocasia portadora in the shower. And I mean, I know I keep saying as well, like I am using the predatory mite sachets and they are very, very good. I haven't had massive pest issues with any of my plants in quite a long time since I've started using them. Um, but some plants that are just very, very susceptible can still, if you're not around to monitor them, can still, like it doesn't completely eradicate pests is what I'm saying. Um, but I don't think anything really does, but I'm kind of tempted. I don't want to, but I'm kind of tempted to go in with chemicals on my Portadora, just cause this is such an ongoing issue. And it's something that I just haven't been able to get to the bottom of yet. So if any of you have got this plant and you don't have these issues, let me know what you're doing right, because it is just ridiculously ongoing. Um, but yeah, cool. All of those are watered. I'm going to put them back in my cabinets um, and hopefully they will continue to do well. This is the one that I'm the most worried about, but I'll let you know. <laughs> This one has previously been on the top shelf and I'm not sure if it's going to fit up there anymore. Will it fit? There's quite a lot of weight on that shelf. I'm not sure I'm doing the right thing here. Okay. It seems stable. I'm going to trust that it is. So yeah, this is my Alocasia Portadora. And you can see all there. That's all spider mites and spider mite damage. So let's get this plant into the shower, shall we? Just thinking about it, I don't want to go in with chemicals just yet. I'd really like to avoid it if possible. Also, you're right by the extractor fan. Sorry if this is a little bit loud. Um, but I'm just gonna go in with horticultural soap for the time being monitor this plant for a couple of weeks, keep it isolated, and if I'm still having issues then, then I will consider chemicals. But for now, this is how I'm gonna do it.
And I completely forgot to mention this when I was in my cabinet a minute ago, but another very exciting update in there is that my Anthurium Regal leaf has finally sized up and hardened off. And oh my goodness, it's the most beautiful leaf she's given me since I've had this plant because I have struggled with this plant so much. And although, although the leaf looks fairly healthy on the whole, it does have some damage on it and I've given it such a thorough pest check and I can't see anything. And Emma reckons that maybe it could be flat mite related. I've literally got it right under a bright light. I've looked really closely, I can't see anything, but I think I'm probably gonna need to get a little microscope and just give it a proper check over because I don't want anything to happen with this plant. And if it is flat mite related, it could potentially explain some of the other issues that have been going on with it as well. It has done amazingly since I've got it into semi-hydro. It's got, oh my goodness, the most insane root system now. Just look at that. And I know actually I probably need to pot it in a taller pot so that these roots up here can get a little bit more hydration. But yeah, I think the first port of call probably to check it for flat mites. And since it's been in the cabinet for such a long time now, it's probably going to mean checking out my whole cabinet. Although everything else looks pretty good. But yeah, that's that's something that I need to do at some point. Also, I've just noticed my Hoya Wilbur Graves is giving me a new leaf and it's really pinky. It's obviously got quite sun stressed under the light. Oh, this light is not doing it justice. I'll put a clip in, but it looks so pretty. Aside from that cabinet wise though, I mean, everything on the whole is doing pretty well. Like it's just exploding with growth. I feel like it looks much fuller than it did when I went away. And that's just because everything has grown so dramatically. My philodendron fuzzy petiole in here is giving me new growth, which is really exciting. Also my philodendron El Choco Red, that was the first leaf it gave me that it pushed out in my care. And obviously it's a little bit, I mean, it looks, it looks okay, but it just doesn't look as lovely and kind of glossy as the other ones had but it is also yeah you're giving me a new leaf look at that it's so pretty so yeah I'm I'm really excited with everything going on in here at the moment and a good update as well is that my begonia that I was a little bit worried about that I transferred into semi-hydro from a prop box before I went away it was looking like it was dying when I left and it has bounced back and it's looking lovely and conditioned it's putting out lots of lovely growth so yeah that's making me very very happy indeed in my bedroom cabinet as well something that i have been putting off doing for such a long time and i'm just gonna get it done is chopping up and propagating the runner on my oh no oh claire uh, yeah. on my medium silver because it's ridiculous i've been saying it for such a long time and now i think it's the time to just get it done I thought as well as my Amedrium Silver Runner, I would just give you a couple of prop box updates because I've just noticed a couple of exciting things. I haven't opened these up since I've been home. Um, and I'm not gonna go through all of my prop boxes now. I've left most in the bedroom, but my little Alocasia corns, these are Alocasia Green Shield. Um, they've all rooted amazingly. Uh, and this one's actually giving me a little leaf. And I know I've had loads of questions before about how I propagate alocasia corms and I do it in a few different ways to be honest. This is what Emma refers to as the shallow water method and it is exactly that. It's just putting the corms into, I'm using a hummus tub and just putting like a milliliter of water on the bottom, leaving it somewhere bright, somewhere warm and then they should start to root and sprout um, and that's what all of these ones have done. But if you look at this, actually, this is a pond prop box that I started a while ago. Um, and I've never made a pond propagation box before. I didn't know if it would work. And everything in here is rooted really, really nicely. Um, but I did put some alocasia corms in this as well. And I might need to put in some clips because I'm not quite sure if you'll be able to tell. They're just at the back there. And their roots have spread amazingly. Some of them are starting to give me leaves as well. And I did this at the same time as the shallow water method one. And these ones have actually done better quicker. So I think if I was to just suggest one way, I would probably say go in with a semi-hydro prop box and do it like this. Um, I won't take you through everything in the propagation boxes now because we'd be here for a very long time, but everything looks really good. So I'm really happy about that. Um, but the ones that I wanted to give you kind of like a, a bigger update on, I guess, uh, this one, maybe isn't that exciting to you but it's very exciting to me 
Uh, my philodendron micans in my bedroom has just been not in a good way for a very long time, partly down to neglect on my part. I don't know why it's in a corner where I just kind of forget about it a bit. So it had lost lots of leaves and it was getting very runnery. So I decided to take some cuttings, I think about four days before I went away. So this is probably about three weeks worth of growth, maybe four weeks worth of growth. But I put some wet sticks into this propagation box and just look at them. These are at the stage now, and they've got really good roots on the bottom as well. These are at the stage now where I'd be able to pop them up again and create a brand new plant. So it happens so quickly. And again, I do put this down to the heat because it's been so warm. Um, and the thing that I really love as well is obviously the micans tends to be very kind of dark and velvety in its foliage. When it's new, they're so bright and green and so pretty. Oh, hello, Yoni. Hello, baby girl. Bye. <laughs> Yoni's wanting to go out, so I uh, think that should be the next thing on the cards after this. Um, but the last propagation box update is my philodendron white princess. And all of the sections that I took of this plant have rooted and are putting out new growth, which is great. Um, but in this prop box, just look how beautiful that is. It's a complete ghost section. And I know that obviously that isn't sustainable growth. It doesn't contain any chlorophyll, so it's not gonna, what are you doing? I just gave her a treat and I think she thinks they're still up there. <laughs> um, but for the time that it is like this, I just think it's stunning. I so wish it was sustainable. Um, but yeah, I think probably I'll have to kind of take a proper look at the root system in all of the substrates that I've got it in, but maybe within the next week or two, I might pop them all up. I'm trying to work out whether or not I want to do several plants or I want to create a massive plant. Here, Lee's now having a drink. Um, I, but I kind of think I might create a massive plant. So yeah, again, let me know what you would do, but I've got, I think about eight or nine sections of, of White Princess. And I just think a massive full plant would look amazing. So yeah, very excited about that. Um, and yeah, the two things that I want to do now are the Amedrium Silver, which honestly, these runners are ridiculous. And I don't even know how well they'll prop because some of them are quite thin and spindly, but I'm going to give it a go. So I'm going to do that. And I'm also just going to pot up these little alocasia corms just because I'd like to get them going a little bit. Um, but I don't know where the lid for this Tupperware box is. This is what I usually use to make prop boxes. So I will find that later, or I will just use cling film and create a lid that way. But yeah, I'm just gonna fill the box with sphagnum moss. It feels so nice to be doing planty things again. Honestly, like I was, I was obviously missing Yoli when I was away, but I was also just thinking about my plants so much and wondering what I was gonna come back to. And it just makes you realise that when you take a bit of a step away from it for a while, for me anyway, a lot of the time, it just makes me realise how much I love it. Like, it just becomes so much a part of daily life when there's always so much to be done and watering and this and that. But like, I don't know. I just love plant care more than anything in the world. I really, really, really do. And I don't know if doing this with the Amedriums, I don't know if this is gonna, I don't know, I might get some leaves. From what I've heard, like I've chatted to some of you guys about it and so many of you have said that you've had the exact same issue with the runners and I know you can get it on a moss pole, but even then I've seen people say that they're still very, very runnery. Uh, so <laughs> now I'm asking you for all the help, but again, if you've got any tips, let me know. This is a plant that I've never really been able to strike a good balance with and the leaves that it's got, I love and I think they're beautiful. And if it could just be like that, always I'd be so happy but it just hasn't worked that way for me this thinner bit here I'm not sure how well that will propagate I don't know if you can really gauge on camera but it's so thin I have tried propping this before and it just rotted so I might maybe put that to one side maybe create a separate prop box for that and just do the thicker sections in this hope that that gives them a good chance. Also, I realise I didn't explain what I'm doing. Basically, um, if you look at the runner here, you can see there's 
bumps running along it and those are the nodes those are the points where new growth comes from and where it will root from some of them do actually have little aerial roots already and um, so what i'm doing i'm just separating those sections and then i'll encourage the little aerial roots down into the moss and if anything's going to happen that's going to be the way that it'll happen yeah look at that i think this is just because it's rooting so well because it's been in a really high humidity environment like my bedroom cabinet I don't actually have any fans running in my bedroom cabinet anymore I know uh, I mean I know supposedly you're meant to create very good circulation for your plants and yes I think that is the case but if you think about propagation boxes they don't have any circulation and although they can rot you don't typically struggle with like mildew and mold in there so yeah I've stopped running fans in that cabinet and it's working just fine for me so yeah, obviously this is going to be quite a packed prop box, but oh, I'm just laying them down and encouraging the little roots into the moss. And then I can just keep the moss hydrated either with a lid or as I say, with a cling film top, keep it somewhere warm, somewhere light. And I do hope that soon they might start to give me some growth and then maybe I can pop them all up together and get a lovely full plant. I don't know. I don't know what my plan is for this plant at the moment, but we'll see. And then with the alocasia corms, I'm just going to get one out if I can. Oh, they're literally all attached together. Their roots are crazy. Instead of potting them up right in a pot, I might actually just use this for the time being as a little pot because there's one two three four five there's six bulbs here six corms and they are going to grow very very quickly and they probably will need to be divided fairly soon like within the next few months but for now if i just pop them like that i think that should be okay and then i can just monitor them all together that's what i'm going to do and again, I have spoken so much about the success I've had with alocasia in pond. So I am going in with, this isn't actually pond, this is the soil ninja equivalent, which is pretty much the same thing, but it doesn't contain fertilizer. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do them in this. And I mean, to be honest, I probably don't need to untangle them that much, but I just want to make sure they're all in there in the right direction. Oh, whoa, look at these roots. I'm guessing them to actually sit upright is quite difficult because some of the roots, because this one's obviously like been lying on its side, some of the roots are coming off at weird angles. So I mean, if I have to cover them in a little bit of pond, that's not the end of the world. They should be able to break through fairly easily, I think. That leaf is just adorable. Look at it. The green shield is probably one of my favourite allocations. I think I know it's considered, well in the UK anyway, much more common nowadays, but I just love it. And in theory, because obviously they haven't grown that tall yet, I can acclimate them quite slowly. I can keep the lid on until they start to reach there and then I can start taking the lid off. And a little bit of water. And on the note of alocasia, it wouldn't feel right to end this video without giving you an update on my favourite plant, my variegated alocasia fry deck, which is doing so well. This is the one that I was really, really worried about when I was away because I know it can be very sensitive. I just managed to strike a balance that works for this plant. Like it gave me so much grief for such a long time, but it's putting out beautiful growth. I've, I've started rotating it a little bit more to try and get its growth a bit fuller. Um, and this leaf that it was pushing out when I first came home was going that way and now now it's going this way so yeah I'm just loving this plant and it has got another little oh if I can where can you see it's got two plants in there now it's had a little corn pop up and so in theory I could divide it I think my focus for the time being is just getting it as lovely and full and big as I possibly can and then I will think about potentially dividing it and making two separate plants but it is my pride and joy. I'm so proud of this plant. 
I love it. I just love it. <laughs> and I'm so happy that I finally found stuff that is working for it. So so yeah, I am. Um, I've got I've got loads of other plant things that I need to get on top of. Honestly, like uh, there's another situation with mealybugs through my bedroom, but that's going to be a much bigger job because it's on my massive Hartley philodendron. I've got just an endless list of things to do at the moment, so expect lots more plant videos. Plant videos, plant chore, repotty, dealing with monstera videos uh, in the next in the next few weeks because I've got a lot to do. Um, but yeah, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and as always, if you were doing plant stuff along with it, I hope you managed to get lots done. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Hey sexy plant lovers. <laughs>